Sushruta for Neat is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. Hello students, good morning. So in, uh, we have started a new chapter. In our last class, I have just taken one lecture. In my first class, I have given an introduction of the chemical kinetics, where it is used or where it is useful, and why we also need to have the information about rate of chemical reactions or in which what are the different steps and all of a chemical reactions. Means the chemical, there could be chemical reactions which happen in one step. However, such reactions are very few. Most of the reactions happens in more than one step, and those reactions are called complex reactions. And how, how those complex reactions or different steps happens, and out of all those steps, which one is the rate determining? Step? These things which we uh, determine, and based on that, one can find or one can propose the mechanism of mechanism of a chemical reactions uh, of a chemical reaction. Also, one can do this for the all type type of chemical reactions. There we use, and in while explaining this, I have also explained or the defined the uh, explained the definition of the rate of disappearance of a reaction or rate of a reaction or rate of appearance of product and there we also saw about the average rate and average rate that is defined as this delta change in concentration of a reactant divided by time interval and then, then we also talk about the instantaneous rate a average rate is between a time time interval in a time interval what is the change in the concentration if you calculate the rate of change in that concentration this is what the rate of reaction that we obtain and that we obtain and this instantaneous rate is something at the particular moment at the particular instant what is the rate of reaction as we know this analogy and a kind of a speed of a moving body or all this instantaneous speed average speed is a kind of things one can draw the analogy as well these things and few other concepts we also see some numerical problems I have also explained. So this is another important point. While suppose this is a chemical reaction, like suppose 5 Br minus H plus, plus BrO3 equals 6 H plus gives 3 Br2 equals plus 3 H2O liquid. Here the rate of reaction one can write as because the rate of reaction, if I write just because of the bromine, bromine 5, suppose in this reaction, 5 moles of bromine reacts with only one mole of bromate BrO3 minus and now the six moles of H plus ion are also consumed during this process and only three molecules of Br2 and three molecules of water will be formed. So one if we just calculate the rate of disappearance of bromine, bromide, rate of disappearance of bromate and rate of disappearance of H plus ion that will not be the same because in the time when one mole, mole of bromate is disappeared or is consumed by the same time, five moles of bromide is consumed. And thus, one can, not, there is some uh, difference in the rate of dis disappearance of different reactants and rate of appearance of products may also be the different, may also be different. However, to just to have the real rate of reaction cannot be different and to have that, to obtain that, what do we do? We just do that based on the stoichiometry, what we see one fifth of the rate of disappearance of bromide just by common sense we can one can find out one fifth of the rate of disappearance of bromide would be equal to the disappearance of bromate because by the time one mole of this is consumed only uh, five moles of this is consumed so it means one fifth this test of disappearance of this is five times to the rate of disappearance of this so this is five times of the rate of, of disappearance of this. So if we just divide it by five, one by five, if you make just a stoichiometric coefficient and minus sign before the reactants are put because the concentration of the reactants are decreasing. So delta value, if you just calculate delta Br minus, it will come with the negative sign. And to compensate, to make that thing positive, we have just added minus sign just to make that overall rate positive because negative rate has nothing, which means the reaction is not proceed. Even the rate is zero, it means the reaction is not going. And what does it mean that the rate of re reaction is negative? It may mean that the reaction is happening in the reverse direction, but one can define it in the opposite way direction as well. The rate of reaction in the opposite direction is this. 
so rate of reaction with the negative value has no meaning so we just added minus sign however if the for the product we know that concentration of the product increases so we don't have to add any negative sign there and now this is as this one by three is what is stoichiometric coefficient for bromine and this one by three for a stoichiometric coefficient for the water in this equation similarly one can also find out the instantaneous rate suppose this equation if you remember it is the average for the average rate for the instantaneous rate also one can write this is minus 1 by 5 dbr by dt minus dbro3 concentration of bro3 divided by dt is equal to minus 1 by 6 d concentration of h plus and divided by dt is equal to 1 by 3 d concentration of br2 divided by dt dt sorry is equal to 1 divided by 3 d concentration of water dt this way one can write also the equation for the uh, instantaneous rate for the equation and we have also seen for the gaseous equations as pressure is proportional to the concentration from this equation so one can use con pressure in the place of concentration as well for the gaseous reactions up to this year this example we have seen this numerical problem let's see this question a couple of questions and we'll see further uh, move further so for the reaction r2p the concentration of a reactant changes from 0 0.03 mole to 0 0.02 molar this is molar in 25 minutes so this much change in concentration happens in 25 minutes Calculate the average rate of reaction. So we have to calculate the average rate of reaction or the instantaneous rate, average rate of reaction using units of time both in minutes and seconds. So, okay, so we have to report this result into the unit, the two different units. When the unit of time is, in one case, unit of time is minute and another case, unit of time is second. So what we know, this is the reaction R2P and average rate for average rate, what we know, delta change concentration of R means the change in concentration of R this minus is for the reactant which is being consumed and so its concentration is decreasing divided by delta T and this delta T is the time interval so in which this much change in the concentration of reactant happens so minus uh, this was the initial concentration 0 0.02 molar and now it in the 25 minutes next 25 minutes it has become 0 0.03 molar so let me just yeah so sorry it was the this is the right one so this is the was the initial concentration i just made a mistake this was the initial concentration actually change in concentration of reactant is the final concentration minus initial concentration and the final concentration this was the concentration initial concentration 0 0.03 molar in 25 minutes this concentration becomes became 0 0.02 molar so 0 0.02 molar final minus initial concentration is a change in concentration of reactant and this is minus and this will also come as minus 0 0.01 so minus and minus will become plus and that's why we get 0 0.01 molar divided by 25 minutes and you see how this the reactant for reactant this comes with the negative sign and that, that's why this minus sign was important for us to put into the equation so 0 0.01 molar divided by 25 it means 4 into 10 to the power 5 minus 4 molar per minute is the unit or molar per minute molar is what mole per liter so one can write it as 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 mole per liter per minute and here the unit of time is minute now what is asked the question also asks us to report this result into the unit of time when time is when the unit of time is second so what can we do the unit of time which is this is minute so this is a 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 mole per liter divided by minute and minute we can write minute as 60 seconds so 60 seconds second we can write as per second here so it will be equal to the numerical value will be equal to 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by 60 and after solving this we get 6 6 this value perhaps there is some this is minus this let me check this whether this uh, calculation is correct this is 
the value numerical value so yeah so there is minor error and this is I think 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 6 mole per liter per second. So you can also check it whether I have made it right. This is only the difference. It appears from this calculation that there should be this. So this will become 4 divided by 6 into 10 to the power minus 5. 4 divided by 6 will be equal to 0 0.66 into 10 to the power minus 5 and it will come to be 6.667 into 10 to the power minus 6 and this is the right answer. So I had made a mistake while I putting the decimal, I put it here, it should be here. Now it is corrected now. Now let's see then another question. So in a reaction 2A gives product, the concentration of A decreases from 0 0.5 mole per liter to 0 0.4 mole per liter in 10 minutes calculate the rate during this interval so this is the reaction 2a gives product and what we know here is the rate of disappearance of a is something we should take care of and the average rate as we know average rate we define as per this equation here the s2 equimetry 1 divided by s2 equimetry coefficient so minus is for the reactant because we consider are considering reactant or here it could be a one may write a here so minus half is for the stoichiometric coefficient change in concentration of a in time interval delta t and so this is equal to minus is for this minus 1 by 2 2 is here and the concentration became 0 from 0 0.5 mole per liter to 0. 4 mole per liter. So, this is the final concentration minus initial concentration in 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a time interval. So, 0 0.1 molar divided by 20 minutes. And this is molar is why with the mole per liter is nothing but molar. One may I should also retain it here. No, just some minor. So, this is molar and molar is nothing but mole per liter is also represented represented as molar is also written as molar so 0 0.1 molar divided by 20 minutes or this will be equal to 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar per minute and molar per minute means molar is what mole per liter per minute so this is the answer now let's look into the factors influencing rate of reaction so there are many factors which influence the rate of reaction and one thing we might also be knowing that the concentration that we have seen and if you remember this graph even in this graph what we see the slope is changing and what we know the slope is what slope keeps us the instantaneous rate at that particular point particular instant in the concentration but such time plot and what we see the slope is changing continuously for the react if the concentration of reactant versus time plot and also in the concentration of product versus time plot and this is because the rate of reaction is changing and so the rate of reaction is also changing here you can find it directly the every instantaneous rate of reaction is changing you can see here the slope is changing here the rate of reaction is minus of the slope negative of the slope and that is also changing so what do we see with the concentration as the concentration changes for a general reaction most of the reactions what happens the reaction rate of reaction changes another thing that we observe if you change the temperature whether you decrease the temperature, increase the temperature, it has been observed that, a rate, that the rate of reaction also changes. Similarly, we use, use the catalyst to enhance the rate of a reaction, chemical reaction. And to enhance the rate of a chemical reaction, if you are using certain chemical substances known as catalyst, it means catalyst is also changing the rate of the reaction. And then the third, another point is the surface area of the reaction. Like concentration, you can, as I said, one can also consider for the gaseous reactants and product pressure there. So concentration and pressure can be used synonymously here. The surface area of reactants are not only the reactants, even if the uh, um, catalyst is the heterogeneous catalyst. Heterogeneous catalyst means the surfaces, 
then also the surface area of catalyst or the active surface of the catalyst and its surface area also affect the rate of the reactions usually so there are this these are the factors which affect the rate of a reaction and we will be looking into all these factors one by one let us first look into the dependence of rate of a reaction on the concentration on the rate of a chemical reaction at a given temperature first of all you should understand the rate of a reaction depends on the con concentration it also depends on the temperature it depends on the presence of catalyst presence or absence of catalyst and what type of catalyst how active the catal catalyst is how much it can decrease the barrier so for a com particular chemical reaction there can be many catalysts there can be several catalysts so which catalyst is more efficient and that the more efficient catalyst will decrease the rate of reaction more significantly and more rate it will increase the rate of reaction more significantly why because it decreases the barrier for that particular reaction to a greater extent so rate of a chemical reaction so also depends on the concentration of surface area i have already explained so the rate of a chemical reaction at a given temperature may depend on the concentration of one or more reactants and products it may depend on concentration of one or more reactants for the product sometimes with respect to certain reactants or product rate of reaction doesn't change although those reactants are required for the reaction to happen but what it has been observed that with respect to those reactants or product usually rate of reaction doesn't get affected to us. and that the, if the, the particular reactant is in excess suppose if it is already in the excess and not the limiting reagent so it was already in the excess even if you add extra mo molecule of that reactant or even some of the molecules even if you remove the reaction will not going to be rate of reaction is not going to be affected with respect to that reactant because it was already in large excess and if it is in large excess adding few more some amount and removing some amount will not affect the rate of reaction until unless that, that, that doesn't happen what will happen the react rate of reaction dip may depend on the concentration of one or more reactants or products which are not in the excess the representation of rate of reaction in terms of concentration of reactant is known as a rate law this is a very important point the representation of rate of reaction in terms of concentration of reactant is known as rate law which is also known as rate equation or rate expression rate equation rate expression rate law they are all synonymous and these things will be using throughout the chemical kinetics this chapter it will be used many at the many places this is the most important concept i feel you should understand the second thing will be the order of reaction and understanding the rate law or rate expression will itself understand the order of reaction so the order the rate expression or the rate equation or the rate law itself contains the order with respect to different reactions what is our order of reaction those things we will see let us see into the rate expression and the rate constant another term that will be introduced here is rate constant what is the rate law or rate equation or rate expression same thing so rate expression is already i have introduced it we will see about it in a bit more detail and the rate constant that, that will be the another term that will be used the rate of a reaction generally decreases with the passage of time as the concentration of reactants decreases this is what we have seen even in this graph in our previous lecture so this rate is decreasing because negative of the slope is decreasing usually with the time and this was the typical example that we have seen and here also the graph with the, that we plotted we are you can see here the slope is decreasing and the negative of the slope is actually decreasing so what we see the, so the rate of reaction depends upon the concentration of the reactants and this is a very common thing so let's consider this uh, consider a general reaction of this type a a a molecules of a reacts with b molecules of b and gives c molecules of c and d molecules of d as a as product so where this a b c and d are stoichiometric coefficients of reactants and products and stoichiometric coefficients means in the balanced chemical equation whatever the 
coefficients that are there before reactants and product molecules those are called stoichiometric coefficients the rate expression for this reaction is one can write rate is proportional to concentration of a as rate depends on the concentration of a and that may be to certain power x and it also depends on concentration of b to the power y so that we do not know value of x and y this value of x and y may or may not be equal to a and b so where this x these exponents x and y may or may not be equal to a stoichiometric coefficient a and b so it is not rate is not directly proportional to concentration of a concentration of a means concentration of a to the power one it may be depend on some other exponent some other power so what is that what will be the value of that power that x value of x with respect to a and value of y with respect to b this is what we obtain experimentally one cannot predict these values so these exponents x and y may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients that we see for this reaction a and b so for certain elementary reactions it may be equal to a and b for but for many reactions and most of the reactions and for the complex reactions it is usually not equal to a and b so one can rewrite this equation rate proportional to a to the power x into b to the power y and on rewriting this what we will do with to remove this proportional we have to add a proportionality constant to equate rate with this so rate to equate this we add my proportionality constant k so this what we obtain is rate is equal to k into a to the power x into b to the power y and this k the value this proportionality constant we call as a rate constant so here what we are introducing this is a rate constant and this is the expression that we are obtaining for the rate expression rate expression you can see the rate law which is also called the rate law although this is defined here but actually how it will be obtained is explained here so in this case what i have saying representation of rate of reaction in terms of concentration of reactant is known as rate law so the rate of reaction is represented in terms of concentration of reactants in this equation so this is a rate law equation and now what we know the rate of reaction earlier the instantaneous rate if you remember i have a explained here like instantaneous rate one can write with respect to reactant minus d concentration of rdt so minus d concentration of rdt instantaneous rate i can put this value before the rate and if i write at the place of rate minus d concentration of rdt equals to k a to the power x into b to the power y so this equation d minus t concentration of rdt equals to k a to the power x b to the power y is called the differential rate equation this is the rate equation this is the rate this one is the rate equation and this is the differential rate equation because we are using here the differential so where k is the proportionality constant and is called the rate constant and this k is the proportionality constant is called the rate constant and the equation which relates the rate of a reaction to concentration of a reaction is called rate law or rate expression and so this equation is called these both of these equations are called rate law or rate expression thus rate law is expression in which so the rate law is what or rate expression so one can define the rate law as what though it is right written as law but it is what it is a rate expression so it's actually a rate expression in which so this is the expression this is the equation the expression so rate law is also expression in which reaction rate is given in terms of molar concentration of reactants with each term raised to some power and this power is called order with respect to a given reactant so each term of each concentration term for a particular reactant is raised to certain power and as this is what we see concentration of a is raised to the power x we do not know value of x and y we also know what are a b c d here is just a general equation and b to the power y each is raised to the certain power and this power is called order with respect to the corresponding reactant so this x is the order of the re of reaction with respect to a reactant a 
and y is order of the reaction with respect to b the overall order of reaction is uh, obtained as x plus y x is order with respect to a b is order of the reaction with respect to y and overall order will be equal to x plus y and this is how it is thus the rate law is expression in which reaction rate is given in terms of molar concentration of reactants with each term raised to some power which is called order which may or may not be same as the stoichiometric coefficient as i explained earlier of the reacting species in a balanced chemical equation this may be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient for certain reactions so for example if we take this example no gaseous 2 no gaseous plus o2 gaseous gives 2 no2 this is the balanced chemical equation we can measure the rate of this reaction as a function of lcl concentration either by keeping the concentration of one of the reactants constant and changing the concentration of other reactant or by changing the concentration of both the reactants so what do we do how will we obtain the rate law in the experiments usually what we do we keep the concentration of one of the reactants suppose this is our uh, two reactants which are making this product what will happen in experiment we i'll initially take accordingly the concentration of both of this certain you know, i start with certain concentration of both of this what will happen in the next reaction is next uh, experiment what will i do i keep concentration of one of the reactant constant i'll change the concentration of another reactant and i'll see how the rate of the reaction is changing similar thing what we'll do in the next experiment i can keep the concentration of this o2 one this reactant fixed and change the concentration of this one and one can have many such experiments so that if to see where there is the continuity or where is the regularity in the obtained results or not or based on that one can find out the order of the reaction or similarly one can obtain the rate law for a given reaction as well so what do we do that is what is explained here so we can do the measure the rate of this reaction as a function of initial concentration either by keeping the concentration of one of the reactant constant and changing the concentration of other reactant or by changing so this is how one can obtain this a table you know from the experiment for this reaction is obtained and experiment there are four experiments that were performed initial concentration of no in per mole per liter is given here and correspondingly initial concentration of o2 the taken value of concentration of o2 is also provided here and initial rate of formation of no2 in mole per liter per second is given so what do we see in this table by if one keeps the concentration of o2 constant the concentration of o2 in first experiment the second experiment is same and if just increase the concentration of no twice to the initial value so from 0.3 molar it has become 0.6 molar and what one can see here in the experiment the rate of the reaction increased four times 0.96 into 0.096 into 4 would be equal to 0.384 so this is four times of this it means if you just increase the concentration of no twice you see the rate of reaction is increasing four times however what we have done that we have tricked that the concentration of this o2 we have not changed suppose in this expression a is no and b is o2 so if b we have not changed concentration of b we have not changed so this value of this the rate will only depend the constant is also a constant we are not changing it this rate constant depends on the temperature and the temperature we are not changing in the ex different experiments so this will also be a constant value so the rate of reaction will only depend on a to the power x so concentration yeah, i am this concentration becomes two times of a and this there is expression x and this one becomes four times it means what it means that value of x must be two in this case it means suppose initial rate of the reaction was r i am giving certain value r and this concentration was maybe suppose x so initially so when this value of concentration of a was x so x to not x x is already here written here so let me consider this as p so p concentration let's consider it as c so concentration is c c to the power x was equal to r 
now this concentration i have increased two times it becomes 2c 2c to the power x is equal to 4r it means what so 2 to the power 2 into c to the power 2 is equal to 4 and that's what uh, and so it means to to the power 4 and it what does it mean the value of x is nothing but value of x is 2 so 2c c divided by 2c to the power whole to the power x and r divided by r so it will become 1 by 4 is equal to 1 by 2 to the power x so 1 by 4 is equal to 1 by 2 to the power x it means 1 by 2 to the 1 by 4 one can write as 1 by 4 as 1 divided by 2 whole to the power 2 and then 1 divided by 2 to the power x so value of x one can equate as 2 so i hope you understand this this is not much difficult mathematics so what we see here once the concentration of no we are increasing we are just doubling it and we see that the rate of reaction is increasing four times it means order of reaction with respect to no night this no is 2 and the value of x if there in that equation is 2 for this case now another set of example when we see here in the third and fourth examples also the concentration of o2 is kept constant so concentration of o2 is constant and the concentration of no is again doubled in this case third and fourth so what we see we see again why we need to do this two set of experiments because we see whether whatever we obtained here is because of some error in the experiment or it is constant we find it consistently for all the cases and so we again see the rate of reaction increases four times it becomes four times it means order of reaction with respect to no must be two and so when concentration of no is doubled while that of o2 is kept constant then the initial rate increases by a factor of four this indicates that a rate depends upon the square of the concentration of NO and a square of the concentration of NO, it means the order of reaction with respect to NO is 2. Now, let us see another thing. In the experiment first and third, the concentration of NO is kept constant, fixed, 0 0.3 molar, 0 0.3 molar. And what do we see? We observe in the rate expression that this has become two times. The rate became two times and what we also see the concentration of O2 has been doubled. The concentration of O2 has been doubled while concentration of NO were kept, was kept constant and we see two times increase in the rate of the reaction. It means the power of to which the rate of the reaction power on the concentration of O to which the rate of reaction depends must be equals to 1 and that is why when this is doubled this is also doubled. In the experiment, second and fourth, here also the concentration of NO is kept constant and this becomes, and the while the concentration of O2 is again double 0.3 to 0.6, and we again see the two times increase in the rate of reaction. So the concentration of when oxygen is doubled, we again see that there is two times increase in the rate of the reaction, initial rate of the reaction. It means again that the order of reaction with respect to O2 is one so when concentration of ono is, no is kept constant and that those two examples were seen and concentration of o2 is doubled the rate gets doubled indicating that the rate depends on the concentration of o2 to the first power and to the first power means what with the hence the rate equation for this reaction will be rate is equal to k n o to the power 2 concentration of n o to the power 2 divided by o2 one can this is what how we have obtained we have just equated this equation with this equation so the value of b here to the power y one can obtain as i have explained for the no similarly and one can find out the power as well for o2 so note here and this is what the rate law one can write the differential rate law will be in this form so minus so the differential form of this rate expression is given as this minus d the V R R is for the respect to reactant divided by dt is equal to k concentration of n o to the power 2 into concentration of o2 to the power 1 and power 1 we are not showing here. So note that this reaction in the rate equation derived from the experimental data, 
the exponents of the concentration terms are same as the stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced chemical equation what we see the power here the value of x is 2 and value of y for oxygen is 1 in the equation what we see this equation the a value of a here we write if you just compare it with the general equation this equation the value of a is 2 and value of b is 1 so the x and y is actually equal to a and b for this particular chemical reaction and the overall rate of reaction one can uh, order of reaction one can obtain as just by summing the power the, the rate to the concentration terms that are there in the rate expression and this 2 plus 1 so overall rate of this reaction will be 3 so this is a third order reaction so anyway so no and what we see so this for this reaction the rate equation derived from experimental data this was the expression as you see here it was derived from this experimental data the exponents of the concentration terms are the same as the stoichiometric coefficients in balanced chemical equation let's see some other examples and in this example suppose these are two reactions and the experimental rate expressions that were obtained as we obtained this for for this reaction with the similar practice one can obtain rate expression for all the chemical reactions of course these two chemical reactions the experimental rate expressions are given so this is cl3 first reaction is cl3 chloroform reacts with chlorine to give carbon tetrachloride plus hcl the rate expression for this equation is this reaction is rate is equal to k the rate constant into concentration of chcl3 raised to the power 1 1 is not shown here into concentration of cl2 raised to the power half one can see and the stoichiometric coefficient if you see the stoichiometric coefficient for chcl3 it is 1 so 1 is there but for cl2 it is also 1 but what we saw here is it is half it is not 1 so the although the rate of reaction depends on the concentration of cl2 but it depends only as the power half of this concentration of cl2 in the another expression in this expression we you see the this is the hydrolysis of the ester this reaction is the hydrolysis of ester this is ester so ethyl acetate this is ethyl acetate and once it hydrolyzed what we see the acetic acid and ethanol formation acetic acid and ethanol is formed and what we see the rate expression this the rate depends on this is the rate constant for this equation these rate constants for different reactions may be different although they all are shown as well look k one constant this means but it doesn't mean this and this rate constant for this and these reactions will be the same or even for this reaction for different reactions rate constant will be different so this case for this reaction rate constant for this reaction into concentration of this ester raised to the power one one is shown here into the concentration of water raised to the power zero it means the rate of reaction doesn't depend on the concentration of water and usually water we use in excess and so one can also obtain this so the rate of reaction only depends on the concentration of a star or the ethyl acetate in this case and not on the concentration of water so the order of reaction with respect to ethyl acetate is one and with respect to water is zero so the rate of reaction will not depend on the concentration of water because this is the concentration of water to the power zero it means this is one so this is nothing but this entire value is one so rate is actually the rate expression is k into the concentration of ethyl acetate, acetate raised to the power 1. In these reactions, the exponent of the concentration terms are not the same as their stoichiometric coefficient. And we see here the stoichiometric coefficient for water is 1. But this power raised to the power concentration of water is not 1. It is 0. It is not same and so what we see thus it can be said that a rate law for any reaction cannot be predicted by merely looking at the balanced chemical reaction that is theoretic one cannot get it theoretically but must be determined experimentally
so it must be determined experimentally. This was has so now I think this is visible the bottom line. So now so let's understand about the order of a reaction. Now this is a very important point. Although in the rate expression, as we have seen, it is already included, it is implemented there. But let us try to understand it separately, some more concepts. In the rate expression, the rate expression, rate is equal to K into concentration of A to the power X into concentration of B to the power Y. The general, for a general reaction that we have seen, A molecules of A reacts with B molecules of B, give C molecules of C and D molecules of D. This A, B, C, D could be anything. X and Y indicate how sensitive rate is to the change in concentration of A and B. If the value of X is very high, so the constant are very low, the constant, so the rate of reaction will be very sensitive with concentration of A. If the value of X is very high or so very low. But similarly, if the value of Y is very high or very low, rate of reaction will be very sensitive as you understand this. If the A, this value of X is 5. So even if the small change in this a concentration of A will make you see significant change in the rate of the re initial rate of the reaction. Or if it is suppose 0 0.1, so you will also see a significant decrease in the initial rate of the reaction. So this is what for X and Y indicates how sensitive, this X and Y indicate how sensitive the rate is, so or it means the rate of reaction is to change in concentration of A and B. Some of these exponents, that is x plus y in rate expression, gives the overall order of a reaction, whereas x and y represent the order with respect to reactants A and B respectively. So x and y represents order of the reaction with respect to A and B respectively, x with respect to A and y with respect to B, and x plus y gives the overall rate of the reaction x plus y and which we also represent as n so x plus y, y may be equal to some value and what is another point to be remembered that order of a reaction can be 0 1 2 3 fraction or even negative so order of a reaction can be negative what does it mean so as i said this value of x suppose it is 0 0.1 it could be 0 0.1 so this or maybe it, it could be 1 divided by 10 so 0 0.1 is 1 divided by 10 and 10 to the power minus 1 is also what 1 divided by 10. So 0 0.1 is what 10 to the power minus 1. 1 into 10 to the power minus 1. So one can write it 10 to the minus 1. So some of these exponents this could be even negative. So hence the sum of powers of the concentration, what does it mean if a to the power x this x is suppose minus one so order of reaction could be minus one so if the concentration of a if you increase concentration of a the rate of reaction will be in decreased so it means the negative power means what the negative order the order is what the power the value of x is negative and value of x is negative with for a it means as you increase the concentration the rate of the overall rate of the reaction will decrease and if you decrease the concentration of A, the rate of the reaction will increase. And that is what it means, the negative power. The fraction means this could be the example that we have seen here. This is a fractional value, 1.5, it is 0, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. And this is the order of the reaction with respect to what? With respect to Cl2. And overall order of the reaction will be 1 plus half. So 3 by 2, 3 by 2 is 1.5. So what we obtain, the order we obtain here is the fractional value. So the order of reaction could be 0 and the value of 0 we have obtained here with respect to water. So the order of reaction could be 0, 1, 2, 3 and even fraction or negative. Some of the powers of the concentration of reactants in rate law expression is called order of that chemical reaction, the sum of powers of concentration in the of the reactant in the rate law expression not on this rate law expression one can obtain only by doing experiments and analyze uh, analyzing rate of reaction by the experimental values and not one cannot just write this rate expression or rate law just by looking at the chemical balanced chemical reaction as i have explained earlier so 
So a zero order reaction means that the rate of reaction is independent of the concentration of the reactant. And this is what I have explained here. So zero order with respect to concentration of water, it means the rate of reaction will not depend on the concentration of water. It means it is independent of the concentration of water. And that is why a zero order reaction means that the rate of a reaction is independent of the concentration of reactant and that or that particular reactant. Let's see this question. Calculate the overall order of a reaction which has a rate expression. So rate expression for a particular reaction is given as K into concentration of A to the power of half into concentration of B to the power 3 by 2. So the fractional order is fractional with respect to A and B both. And the net order, the order will be what this power, powers of concentration of A, whatever the and B will just simply add and will obtain the overall order of the reaction and simply because we can have similar analogy rate expression as k a to the power x into b to the power i and order is what x plus y so order for this reaction will be equal to half plus 3 by 2 and half plus 3 by 2 is 2 so the order is integral value here overall order is integral although order with respect to a and with respect to b are fractional values so the order with respect for this reaction will be what you can you can see here or that there is negative with respect to b it means if you increase the concentration of b in this case the rate of reaction will decrease and if you decrease the concentration of b rate of reaction will decrease why it will be so because one can write this rate law rewrite this rate law as rate is equal to k concentration of a to the power 3 by 2 divided by concentration of b so as you increase the concentration of b value of b it the uh, overall value will decrease if you increase concentration of B. So that is why that or that is what the negative order with respect to a particular concent, uh, particular reactant means. Now we can die, uh, similar to this analogous to this one can also obtain the overall order of this reaction and over of all to obtain the overall order of this reaction we have to just simply sum up the powers of the concentration of a and concentration of b so 3 by 2 minus half is equal to minus half as a order of this reaction a balanced chemical equation never gives us a true picture of how a reaction takes place this is one point that one under, need to understand that what i have already also explained a balanced chemical equation never gives us true picture of how a reaction takes place since rarely a reaction gets completed in one step so as very few reactions completed in only one step and those reactions are called elementary reactions so the reactions taking place in one step are called elementary reactions and very few reactions are elementary reaction most of the reactions that we see are complex reaction and those reactions complete in the complete in more than one step two three and so they may take many steps so if you write a net reaction or net equation for a chemical transformation, there are many intermediates which are which appeared in one step and get consumed into the next step. We don't show them. So there are many reactant species or the inter intermediate species of for a particular step reactant and uh, given a step, it is also the product. So there are many intermediate species that are formed transiently during the course of reaction for a complex reaction or for a multi-step reaction are not shown in a balanced chemical equation when the chemical equation is chemical equation completes in more than one step and that's why just by looking at the balanced chemical reaction one may not give the obtain the true picture of how the reaction takes place because many intermediates that were actually formed are not shown into that chemical reaction However, certain reactions, only few reactions, which happens in one step, and they are called elementary reactions. And I have explained uh, when a sequence of elementary reactions give us the product, the reaction are called complex reactions. So the complex reactions are what there are many set of elementary re reactions, a sequence of elementary reactions. They happens in cascade one by one, one after one. And those reactions, overall reactions, if you add all those reactions for equations, you will obtain a complex reaction. So what this is what is said being written here. So when a sequence of elementary reactions gives us the products, 
the reaction are called complex reactions so complex reactions are multi step reactions not the one step reaction so this may be consecutive reactions so the complex reactions may be consecutive reactions means all the steps happening one after one one after one or there may be reactions where the side products have been formed so the one reactants that one set of reactants is forming different sets of products and so the example is consecutive reaction oxidation of ethane to co2 and water passes through a series of intermediate steps in which alcohol aldehyde and acids are formed and there is or maybe the reverse reaction so the sometimes also the reverse reaction also happens so the product that was product for the forward reaction it all is also the it is also the reactant for the reverse step and the side reactions may also take place and example is a night side for the right uh, side reaction is nitration of phenol and when you do the nitration of phenol you will see the product ortho nitrophenol and para nitrophenol and these things we will see in organic chemistry particularly when we will see the friedel craft type of reactions in that chapter the chemical reactions on the aromatic ring we will see this kind of reactions the nitration alkylation acylation those reactions we will see so these reactions and so what we see that there are two products ortho nitrophenol para nitrophenol and one when we i am talk when we talk about one particular reactant so mm -hmm. means the nit uh, phenol plus when it undergoes nitration gives ortho nitrophenol but you have to simultaneously see two reactions one in one direction it is forming ortho nitrophenol and another direction it is forming para nitrophenol so it's actually complex reaction it is happening in two different directions which are, are added to give one product so now let's look into the unit of rate constant so rate constant that value that we have seen in the rate expression the k rate is equal to k into a to the power x into b to the power y this is the rate expression and using that for a general reaction a give plus bb give cc plus dd rate expression could be or rate law could is something a like rate is equal to k a to the power x into b to the power y concentration of b to the power y and x and y are order of the reaction with respect to con reactant a and reactant b so here x and y plus y is equal to n which is the order of the overall order of the reaction so with this one can write the the rate constant k is equal to rate divided by concentration of a to the power x into concentration of b to the power y and to obtain the unit for the rate constant what can be the rate constant what we know the rate is this is the rate of reaction and the unit for the rate of reaction is concentration divided by time this is what we have seen concentration could be in molarity so it's a molar divided by time molar is mole per liter per unit time which could be per um, second per minute this is what we have seen the, in the example so this rate is concentration divided by time unit for rate and this concentration this unit for this is concentration to the power x and for this concentration of b and so in any way this will also be concentration to the power y so the concentration to the power x plus y and x plus y here we def have defined as n which is the order of the reaction so one can write concentration unit for k is concentration divided by time into concentration to the power n which is the unit for the rate constant now we can simplify this concentration is what mole per liter and this is mole per liter to the power n so this will become mole to the power n divided by liter to the power n on further simplification and the si unit concentration is mole per liter and time is second and thus so because time is second in si unit the k when it's k of k for different reactions order can be obtained as this and this will be mole this is a mole per liter so mole to the power one divided by mole to the power n so mole to the power one divided by mole to the power n it will become mole to the power one minus n so in general the general unit one can write mole to the power one minus n the liter this was mole per liter so liter is in the denominator for this liter to the power n per liter to the power n so liter to the power minus n so it will become here so liter finally it has some order as uh, this unit has come with respect to liter as l to the power minus n and the time for the time it is only second here 
this high unit of second so one can write a general unit for rate constant as mole 1 to the power to the power 1 minus n liter to the power n minus 1 and h to the power minus 1 here n is the order of reaction so one can see that the con the unit of rate constant depends on the order of reaction because once you change the value of n you see the value of the, this unit will also be changing and these examples you can see in this table if the reaction is zero order reaction means the order is zero so value of n one can write here zero so if n is zero so this will become mole per liter per second so the unit will become mole per liter per second if the reaction is a first order reaction so value of n is one so mole to the power one minus one so mole to the power zero so this will become one l to the power a n which is one minus one for the first order reaction this is one so one minus one is zero this is also become this will also become one so this is all one into one and this is per second so for the first order reaction the unit for it constant is per second and similarly for the second order reaction one can write value of n as two here so mole to the power one minus two so this will become mole to the power minus one so per mole l liter to the power two minus one so liter to the power one per mole liter per second so one can write per mole liter per second for the second order reaction now let's see this question so identify the rate reaction order from each of the following rate constants so from the rate constant unit of the rate constant is given value of rate constant is given with the unit and once the unit is given from the unit itself one can find out the order of the reaction and sometimes this information is very useful so this formula you should remember mole to the power one minus n liter to the power n minus one s to the second to the power minus one this is the unit for the rate constant not the rate for rate it is always mole per liter per second for the unit si unit for the rate of a reaction is mole per liter per second however for rate constant we see the rate constant unit of rate constant depends on the order of the reaction not the unit of the rate so from the unit of rate constant one can see here liter per mole per second liter per mole per second one can equate this with the and here the directly value one can obtain liter per mole per second second order reaction or from this equation one can equate mole to the power one minus n mole to the power one minus n and here in this case it is given mole to the power minus one it means what it means 1 minus n is equal to minus 1 and so n is equal to 2. Similarly, one can do for this L with this with respect to L as well and we will obtain same value. And in this equation, what we can write the rate constant? It is mole to the power 0, liter to the power 0, or second to the power minus 1 and, and so mole to the power 0, mole to the power 0 is equal to but this is what mole to the power 1 minus n so 1 minus n is equal to 0 so n is equal to 1 so this is first order reaction so this is first order reaction and the same thing we one can also obtain from this table as well now let's, let's talk about the molecularity of a reaction the molecularity is also an important term molecularity usually so the any property it's a bit different than the order of the reaction for elementary reactions means the one step reactions the reaction which happens completes in only one step the order and molecularity is same however for complex reaction molecularity doesn't tell us anything about the order order is different Being about a chemical reaction is called molecularity of a reaction and so means that it is about the collision theory we will 
uh, see a bit um, later on means to have for a chemical reactions to happen what we see some of the reactant molecules they collide with each other so all the reactant molecules which could be atoms ion or um, reacting species which could be atoms ion or molecules which collide together simultaneously or gives us the molecularity of a reaction so the reaction can be unimolecular so depending on that and unimolecular reaction the example is the decomposition of ammonium nitrite ammonium nitrite on heating what happens ammonium nitrate breaks into nitrogen and water molecules two water molecules so this is what unimolecular reaction because only one molecule is taking part in this reaction and it is so reaction can be unimolecular and based on the molecularity means the molecularity for this reaction elementary reaction is one when one reacting species is, invo is involved for example decomposition of ammonium nitride the bimolecular reaction is the molecularity is two bimolecular molecularity is two and the reaction involves simultaneously collision between two species so when two species simultaneously collide with each other to give a product and such reactions are called bimolecular reactions and example of the bimolecular reactions is this when the two hi molecules when they collide together gives h2 plus i2 because until and because two hydrogen from two different molecules they will combine together and two iodide from two different molecules will collide together combine together to form i2 so the molecularity for this reaction is two and so this is called a bimolecular reaction there could be trimolecular or tetramolecular reactions which are usually rare and reactions involve simultaneously collision between three or four reacting species so the example is for this is a trimolecular reaction 2NO plus O2 gives 2NO2 although this uh, what we see more the probability of three molecules or three more than three molecules of colliding together decreases if you know the probability theory one can understand colliding two molecules together the probability is more than colliding three molecules together and collision of four molecules together will the probability will further decrease significantly so the probability that more than three molecules can collide and react simultaneously is very small hence reactions with the molecularity three and more are very rare and slow to proceed so the reaction molecularity is defined one can understand here is for the uni step reactions among this reactions particularly for the particularly for the elementary reactions and so what we see the probability that the reaction with the molecularity three and more are very rare and slow to proceed and not the molecularity and the always this is the same thing is said also for the order reaction with having order more than Three is also very are also very rare with respect to a given reactant. So having for examples we have seen the this NO plus O2 giving two NO2, two NO plus O2 giving two NO2. This reaction, what we have seen the order of reaction with respect to NO is two. It means two NO molecules and NO molecules are colliding together with and and two NO molecules and one oxygen molecules are colliding together to give NO2 molecule and thus the probability for this reaction is also very low but so this and uh, so and it is therefore so as we say the molecularity three and more are very rare and slow to proceed it is therefore meaningful to assume that complex reactions involving more than three molecules in the stoichiometric equation must take place in more than one step so what we see there are many complex reactions and we see molecularity if we just calculate molecularity for them uh, sorry stoichiometric coefficient for them so what we'll see for this reaction a stoichiometric coefficient if we simply add for the elementary reactions if you add the stoichiometric coefficient you will get the molecularity so so here what we see the more than three molecules are involved here one six plus three ten molecules of reactants are involved together and ten molecules of reactants will collide together 
to form these products is very rare and that's it means this reaction is one can obtain one information that this reaction must be happening in multiple steps and this reaction must be happening in multiple steps because there are more than three molecules which are taking part reactant molecules which are taking part in reaction to give these products so this reaction which apparently seems to be of 10th order is actually a second order reaction and in reality from experiments people have found that this reaction is a second order reaction and not the 10th order reaction as one can guess from this thing and this suggests that this reaction takes place in several steps it means this reaction is not the elementary reaction but instead this reaction is taking the reaction takes place in multiple steps several steps and that is why its order is only two although that we, one can see from the balanced equation there are 10 molecules of reactants are taking part into the reaction however which step so since all this reaction happens in several steps multiple steps so which step controls the rate of the overall reaction this is what is very important information suppose a reaction take is taking place in five steps so out of five steps which steps is the determining factor which steps determine the overall rate of the reaction because each rate of each steps may, might be different uh, different and rate of each steps might be different than what will be the overall rate of the reaction how will we find out the overall rate of that reaction and to understand that we will have to find out the slowest step and the rest step because the slowest step if that step is not happening until unless that is a step and that product that are formed in that step is not formed you will not see the reaction will progress in the forward direction and that is why when the reaction take place in the multiple steps for the complex reactions we look forward for the step which is the slowest step and the slowest step is the step which is having highest barrier for that particular step and how the barrier appears and why the we see the barrier for each reaction and the reason that i have said earlier because of the chemical bonding chemical bonding each molecule gets certain stability and because you want to break a certain bond in during a chemical reaction so to break those bonds you need to provide certain energy and that is how the barrier occurs for each chemical transformation so this equation question can be answered means which step controls the rate of overall reaction this question can be answered if we go through the detailed mechanism of the reaction so if you go through all the steps of the reaction and the complex reactions can be considered to be analogous to of a relay race if you have seen or if you know the relay race you can just analogously understand this so as the chances to win the relay race competition by a team depend upon the slowest person in the team the overall rate of the reaction controlled by the slowest step in the reaction is called the rate determining step so similarly in the complex reaction overall rate of the reaction is controlled by the slowest step and that is why that slowest step is also called the rate determining step so this step because it is the slowest step it will determine the overall determine the overall rate of the reaction now let consider this example so consider the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide which is catalyzed by iodide ion in alkaline medium so in alkaline medium h2o2 decomposes to h2o plus o2 and this decomposition is catalyzed by <coughs> iodide ion the rate equation for this reaction is found to experimentally found to be as a differential rate la minus d concentration of h2o2 dt is equal to k concentration of h2o2 into concentration of i minus so we see each concentration of h2o2 2o2 raised to the power 1 and concentration of i to the raised to the power 1 so this reaction is first order with respect to both h2o2 and i minus however if you look into this reaction in more details one can find out that this this reaction takes place in two steps and these two steps are what the h2o2 first reacts with i minus and i minus it forms h2o plus io minus now this io minus further reacts with another molecules of h2o2 to give h2o2 plus i minus is now released in the product plus o2 and so i minus was taking part into the reaction and it was also released so one can actually get a false 
idea that i is catalyst and it means it's it the rate of reaction may not depend on the concentration of i minus because you can see in the net reaction overall reaction in the overall reaction if you add these two reaction i minus i minus will be cancelled out i o minus i o minus will also be cancelled out so one may get from this equation the false idea that i minus is not taking part in this reaction so rate of reaction may not depend on the concentration of i minus since this is catalyst what we see in the reality in the rate expression the concentration of i minus also <laughs> determines the rate of the reaction and so the order of the reaction with respect to concentration of i minus is obtained to be 1 here and now another important information that we obtain from this is i o minus formation of i o minus this is intermediate species and intermediate species it is getting cancelled out so we do not from this expression we do not have any idea about the intermediate species that is being formed so both the steps are biomolecular elementary reactions that we see the both the steps and these steps are elementary reactions both the step and for both the step one can obtain the molecularity and molecularity is 1 plus 1 2 so this is bimolecular this for this step is also 1 plus 1 this is also bimolecular and order of is also 1 and 1 2 for both the anyway so for order for overall this reaction that is obtained as 2 so the for overall react reaction of the complex reaction we obtain order molecularity we define only for the elementary reaction both the steps are bimolecular and elementary steps that we have seen species io minus is called as an intermediate why because it is formed during the course of reaction but not in the overall balanced equation so it is not formed as a product it is formed for a transient time for a certain time i o minus and later on it is being consumed to form the final product and so it doesn't appear into the final expression of the reaction the first step being slow and this so out of these two steps the first step is the slowest one and so is the rate determining step for this reaction for this reaction which happens in two steps the first step which is the slowest one is the rate determining step and the since it is rate determining step it means the barrier for this reaction is more than this reaction so the barrier if you look at the energy profile for this reaction so it will one barrier and then the intermediate there will be another barrier so first barrier must be larger than the second barrier and that is why first reaction is <coughs> the first reaction is what the rate determining step first step is the rate determining step and the rate of the formation of intermediate will determine the rate of this reaction and so the rate formation the rate of formation of this intermediate which is being formed in the first step itself so the rate of formation of intermediate will determine determine the rate of this reaction i'll stop here i hope the time is over and we'll see i'll see you in the next class